In this video, we're going to go over the normal curve and calculating probabilities and percentages under the normal curve. To accomplish this, I'm going to work through an item from Chapter 5 of the textbook. This item states, IQ scores are normally distributed with a mean or mu equal 100 and a standard deviation of 15. Based on this distribution, we're going to determine various percentages and probabilities associated with various scores and ranges of scores. But let's first talk about what it means for scores to be normally distributed. Here is a picture of what is a normal curve or a normal distribution. The horizontal axis represents the scores and the vertical axis represents the frequency of the scores. And each point along this curve corresponds to a score and the frequency with which that score is seen. Essentially, this is a, a graphical depiction of a frequency distribution. And what's, what is the most important characteristic of a normal curve or a normal distribution is that it is symmetrical. If you folded this curve in half, the edges would line up completely. The line to the left of the midpoint is exactly the same as the line to the right of the midpoint. Um, it also means that the mean, median, and mode are all exactly the same and at the very center of the distribution. So 100% of all the scores or observations fall within this curve. And in our first example, the mean is 100 and the standard deviation is 15. So I'm going to just quickly enter in a mean of 100. So we have that for our reference. In order to calculate percentages of probabilities under a normal curve, we have to convert scores into standard scores or z-scores. A z-score tells us how many standard deviations away from the mean a particular score is. And here is the formula for calculating a z-score. To find a z-score, we're going to take the score, subtract the mean, and divide that by the standard deviation. And in this example, we have the mean and the standard deviation provided. So all we need to do is plug in the score, and we'll be able to find a z-score for any particular score. The first question asks for the percentage of IQ scores between 100 and 120. And when working on these problems, it's really helpful to take a piece of paper and actually draw out a normal curve and then shade in the part of the curve you want to find the percentage of. In this case, um, we want the percentage between 100, which is our mean, and 120. So I'm going to go back to our normal curve. And I don't know exactly where this is going to be but I can estimate that 120 might be just around here somewhere. All right. So I'm going to shade this area right here so that I have a sense of what I'm looking at. All right. And so this is the area that I want to find out the percentage of the scores that are within this area under the curve. I'm going to add the label of 120 just for reference again. So now that we have a sense of what it is that we're looking for, we're going to calculate a z-score. Um, we're going to convert the score of 120 into a z-score. And um, so let's plug in that formula equals 120 over or excuse me, minus the mean. I'm going to put this in parentheses because I want Excel to do this part of it first. And we're going to divide by the standard deviation. And we end up with a z-score of 1.3. This means that a score of 120 is 1.3 standard deviations away from the mean. So now all we have to do is figure out what the percentage is under the normal distribution between the mean and a z-score of 1.3. We do that by referencing a table in the back of the textbook. In Appendix C, there's a list of tables, and the first table, Table A, is the percentage of area under the normal curve. Let's take a look at that now. And there it is. 
you'll notice that this particular picture that we're looking at right now um, looks like the area that we're trying to find, or it's similar to it. And this picture says that the information is going to be found in column B, so that's a clue. All right. So if we look at the actual table, there are three different columns. There is a column for the z-score. Column B shows the area between the mean and that z-score. And column C shows the area or percentage beyond a z-score. And since the normal distribution is symmetrical, um, the 50% of the area is to the left of the mean and 50% of the area is to the right of the mean. So half of the area is here and the other half is there. If you add column B and column Z for any z-score, you're going to end up with roughly 50%. It may not add up quite to 50% because of rounding, but the area between the mean and the z-score and the area beyond the z-score added together will be roughly 50% because this is, um, we're looking at half of the distribution. So the area between the mean and the z-score is represented here and the area between the z-score and beyond is represented in this um, example here. But back to our problem. We were looking for the percentage of IQ scores between 100, the mean, and 120. And 120 has a z-score of 1.3. So I'm going to go in my, my table, and I'm going to look for a z-score of 1.3. And I find it right here. And I'm going to look in column B because I know I wanted that area between the mean and the z-score. The mean is 100, the z-score is 120. And it looks like we have 40.32%. So I'm going to add that in our answers here. 40.32. And I'm going to eliminate the percent. Um, let's see. See if that did it. That did not. I'm going to have to redo that. 40.32. I'm going to do it over here. Okay. So now we have 40.32% of the scores fall between 100 and 120. The next part of the question asks for the probability of selecting a person at random having an IQ between those same two scores. As was discussed in the last video, probabilities range from 0 to 1 and are simply the percentage divided by 100. So um, we can easily do a formula to answer this question. Equals the probability or the percentage over 100. All right. And we end up with a probability of 0 0.4032. So the percentage is simply the probability times 100. The probability is the percentage divided by 100. The next question asks for the percentage of scores between 88 and 100. And so this time I'll go back and I'm going to draw a line somewhere where I think 88 might be. I'm going to just estimate that it's here. This time, the score that we're looking at is actually below the mean, so we'll see if that has an impact on anything. I don't know why I'm not able to fill right now. There we go. And I'm going to label this 88. And again, I'm looking for the area between that score of 88 and the mean of 100. So the first step is to calculate the z-score for a score of 88, um, which is equal to The score of 88 minus the mean of 100.
over standard deviation. And that's, this gives us actually a negative z-score z of negative 0.8. A negative z-score simply tells us that the score is below the mean. And so a, a negative z-score of 88 is 0.8 standard deviations below the mean. So we're going to look at our table. And if you'll notice, there aren't any negative scores in the table. And there's a good reason for that. Since the distribution is symmetrical, the area between the mean and some positive z-score is the same as the area between the mean and that score as a negative score. In both cases, we're going to be looking at column B. So our z-score is 0.8. And let's take a look at the um, score for a point z-score of 0.8. There it is. And we mentioned that we're going to be looking at column B because we're interested in the distance between the mean and this particular z-score. And we see that the percentage is 28.81. So let's add that to our answers. 28.81. Now, I believe your textbook asks you also to find the probability of selecting a person at random having an IQ be, um, between 88 and 100. And you know the drill. We're going to just simply um, divide 28.81 by 100 to give us the probability of 0.2881. But moving on. Our next question asks for the percentage of IQ scores that are 110 or above. So I'm going to go back to our drawing and I will draw a line that looks like it's somewhere around um, 110. Let's see, maybe around here. Okay. And I'll label this 110. So this time we're not looking for a score that's between the mean and a certain score, but we're looking for all of the scores that are 110 or higher. Okay, and so this represents the area that we're now looking at, something from a score to the very end. And if we look at our table and we look at the pictures that are at the top, instead of going from the mean to a score, we're going to be looking at the score to the end. Of course, our area is bigger than this picture right here. Our area um, contains more scores. But nevertheless, when we're going from a score to the end, we're going to be using column C. So first we'll calculate a z-score, which is equal to our score of 110 minus the mean of 100 in parentheses over the standard deviation of 15. And we end up with a z-score of 0.7. When we look for 0.7 on our table, we see it here, 0.7. But um, this time, as we mentioned, we're going to be using column C because we want to look for the area that's from the score and beyond. And so our percentage is going to be 
that scored a particular score or lower. So first I'm going to mark a spot and I'll label it 125. And in this case, I'm going to be looking for the area that is below the score. So that area is going to include the area between the mean and the score. So we'll fill that in. But it will also include the other half of the distribution. So all of these scores are under the score that we're looking at, 125. And you'll notice that this particular um, shading does not really look like any of these here, but that's okay, we can figure this out. What we have to do is we have to break this section down into multiple parts. Um, we, we know how to find the percentage here. We've done that already and we're gonna do it again. Um, so we'll start with that. So a Z-score, for an IQ score of 125 is what we need to figure. Minus mean over the standard deviation. And we end up with a z-score of 1.7. And looking back at our picture, we know that we're going from the mean to the z-score to find this area first. And so that's going to be column B. We're going to find a z-score of 1.7. And we end up with this right here, 45.54. So 45.54 is going to be this area right here. Okay. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to enter that in. Forty-five point fifty-four, and I'm going to add to that the other half of the curve that we don't even really have to figure because we know what percent of the cases fall here. It's half of the distribution, so this is going to be fifty percent. So we're going to take the forty-five point fifty-four here, and we're going to add fifty percent. And that gives us a total area under one hundred twenty-five. An IQ score of 125 equals 95.54% of the people in this sample. So these scores represent 95.54%. And truthfully, I probably estimated where this line goes um, incorrectly. It probably goes a little bit closer to the tail to really capture 95.54%. So just to reiterate, a person with an IQ score of 125 has a score at or high, equal to or higher than 95.54% of the population. So in all of the cases so far, we've started with an IQ score and then we've looked for a percentage or a probability. However, we can also look for a score based on a percentile. So let's say I want to know how smart I have to be, how high of an IQ I have to possess in order to be as smart or smarter than 99% of the population. In other words, what is the IQ associated with the 99th percentile? Just as with the previous percentile rank question, I'm interested in this shape and I want to know what score is associated with 99%. So I'll go and make that shape right now. So I'm going to draw a line, and what I'm interested in is in the 99th percentile, and I think that's going to be somewhere around, well, maybe right there. Okay. All right, so I'm basically um, looking at the scores that are at the very, very top of the distribution. 
And just as with the previous question, we know that the left-hand side contains 50% of the cases. That means if I'm looking for the 99th percentile, this side over here is going to be 49%. So I'm going to put these labels in as well. I've got 50% on one side, and I'm going to be looking for 49 on this side. The question is, what score is associated with a percentage of 49? Essentially, I'm doing the same problem we've been doing, but backwards. So I'm going to go to column B in the table, and I see that a Z-score, I'm going to look for 49%. I see that, I see that a Z-score of 2.33 is um, matched up with 49% between the mean and the score. So 2.33 is going to be the z-score that I'm interested in. So since the z-score for 49% is about 2.33, I now know my z-score. I know the mean and the standard deviation. So I can solve the equation for x. So we'll go through this one step at a time. So I'm going to put my z-score here. And the first thing I'm going to do is when I'm solving for x, just one moment, is I'm going to multiply both sides by the standard deviation. So if I multiply this side, for example, by the standard deviation over 1, that will get rid of the standard deviation on this side, and it will combine it with the z-score. So I'm just going to do the z-score right now. I'm going to combine the z-score. Um, times the standard deviation, and I forgot the equals, so there we go. And that gives us a, a z-score um, times a standard deviation of 34.95. So now that we've gotten rid of the standard deviation denominator here, we're left with 34.95 equals x minus the mean. So if we add the mean to both sides, that will make our equation even um, easier to understand. So I'm going to take 34.95, and I'm going to add to it the mean of 100, and I end up with a final score of 135. And so I know that the score associated with the 99th percentile rank is 135. By solving this equation for x, I now know that if I have an IQ of 135, my IQ is as high or higher than 99% of the population. This is a great week to go through all of the problems in the, in the textbook in the back, or in the back of the chapter, and check your answers with the answers in the back of the book, because something um, such as determining the area under a curve, it's just something you need to practice with, and um, practice will help to solidify the concept. If you have questions as you're working on the homework, if something's not working, please come to the discussion board, and we'll work it out together.